Hi, my loves. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. I really hope that you are having a beautiful and an amazing day. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you for all of your love and support. I really appreciate it. This is a timeless collective reading for the sign of Sagittarius. Pay the swords. Page of Swords, look at that, the Emperor and the Lovers, the Seven of Wands, <laughs> the Magician, the Ace of Wands, King of Wands, and the Four of Wands. What did I say? What did I say? There you have it. Page of Swords, the Emperor, the Lovers, Seven of Wands. I feel like somebody is looking into a situation with their masculine. Or a masculine. The lovers is here. There's a choice to be made. Somebody has their, their guard up. Somebody's guard is possibly up so high that they're not able to manifest a new beginning. You have a king of wands here that's coming in. The four of wands. Somebody is very confused about who to take an offer with. To the point that now eight of pentacles in the reverse. Somebody does not want to work on their co commitments when it comes to love at all. I feel like this emperor, the emperor usually is, of course, divine masculine. But for some people, the emperor is somebody that you just feel like they have. The emperor can be a, a, a family man, a boss or whatever, for sure. The emperor definitely could be somebody who's married. Some of you, it's just like I said, you're looking into a situation with someone who is indeed a masculine, but they may not be your masculine. This person could have structure, stability, family, commitments, and obligations elsewhere. Somebody here is, is literally looking into the partnership or the relationship of a masculine. And by doing this, it's blocking you from manifesting a passion, a new beginning. King of Wands, Four of Wands, with somebody who's coming in and they have the fire, the passion, and, and the true desire to have, wish to create the Four of Wands with you. Knight of Cups, Seven of Cups. Somebody here is very confused. It's like somebody here, every time you see a new offer, you get confused about it because you are now, you're stuck. Putting this, sh it's like somebody is putting shackles around their own wrists and feet because you keep telling us it's this masculine, it's this person. I'm like, I, I really think it's supposed to be this person. It's not. That person, yeah, they may be divine, but they're not your person. Or you see them as divine. This person, the emperor, they've gone on to marry or establish something elsewhere. The lovers is here. It speaks of a choice. This person made a choice. You made a choice. But the page of swords is that somebody is looking into this situation. And, you know, some of you, if, if you're a feminine wife, you could have a masculine Somebody is looking into this person's life constantly because this masculine is trying to come towards you with an offer to have a passionate new beginning. And somebody here is constantly doing things like, oh, no, I want to block that. People need to let individuals move forward to be with whoever they want to be with, however they want to be with them, whenever, whatever, like, just let it go. It's too much stalking, watching and spying and surveillancing of, of relationships here. And it's coming from people who are refusing to let go. But for me, I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm not going to sit here and just say, oh, it's only the karmics doing it. You have the, you have feminine, um, divine feminists and masculines who, because of these illusions and confusion, they're in a distorted energy too, where they feel like, oh, it's one person that's for me. Or whatever the case may be. And, and it may not be. It's obvious. It's clear here. I'm not making it up. The cards are telling you. The Seven of Wands and the Magician. Somebody here, because Page of Swords, they keep looking at this Emperor. Look, digging into why this Emperor made a, a choice or a decision to go towards love elsewhere, perhaps. Somebody, Seven of Wands, has their guard up. They're fighting challenges and not manifesting Ace of, of Wands. A creative passion, new beginning with somebody possibly new. The King of Wands who was coming back or coming in. 
Or, and, you know, again, because some people, you have a person from the past that's coming back. Some of you, you're looking at a situation right now and you think this person is your person. And you're, cre you're, you're blocking the person that's coming back who has the strength and the courage to actually give you wish fulfillment and a union. Somebody here is just very, very confused about love. And I feel like this is just the entire collective right now when it comes to these connections. It's because everybody is ascending. Look at that Ace of Cups and the Three of Wands. The Ace of Cups and the Three of... There's something coming in, but a cycle here has to close out. The world. A cycle has to close out. Somebody is constantly looking at love and they're, they're wanting it to come in. But I feel like when love comes in, you're, you're closed off. You're isolating yourself from it. You may need to go within right now to do some real deep, you know, healing, introspection, so that you can figure out what is truly wish fulfillment for you. Somebody's idea of wish fulfillment, either you're realizing you're with somebody and it's not what you want it to be. Or you have an idea that being with a person, even from your past, is going to bring you wish fulfillment. And you can get with this person and find that you're going to be very disappointed. But the five of cups is here and behind it is the empress. Wow. <laughs> Justice and judgment. Divine Feminine, this is your choice to make. It's all in how you see situations. The Five of Cups speaks of regret, disappointment. But all is not lost here. But you have to make a, cho a choice now to leave this heartache and this pain behind. Somebody here, it's like you keep waiting on a part. If you want this person from the past to come back, stop talking about how they broke your heart. Because obviously you want to be with them. If you're manifesting someone and you're wondering, well, why haven't they come? It's because you're still heartbroken over something from the past. It's some kind of pain here that just has to be released. It, just, it has to. King of Pentacles and the King of Swords here. It's two different masculines. And then here, the sun. It's like you're going to have to free yourself. But I feel like for some of you, it's like with these two people here, you keep finding yourself stuck. Do I want the twin flame or the soulmate? Do I want the new person? Do I want the old person? Spirit is like, just let go. Just free yourself. Work on being more grounded and stable because you're holding on to some kind of baggage here that is keeping you mentally stuck to the point that you're just carrying this baggage and you can't move forward. Have the strength to finally just let go. The hardest part is in just letting go. Just let go. It wasn't meant to be. Or whatever situation you're in, it's not meant to be. And the sooner that you can just let go, the sooner you will find yourself being passionate again about your life. Knight of Wands and the Knight of Pentacles and someone, the right person, they will find their way to you or back to you. And then you can move on to peaceful, calm waters. But you have the Six of Swords here and the Six of Cups. You, It's like you're moving... Again, you're either moving towards a person from the past or you need to move away from a person from the past. Six of Swords here and the Six of Pentacles. I'm sorry, I said the Six of Pentacles. There's the Nine of Pentacles. Six of Swords and the Six of Cups. For some of you, a person from the past, yeah, they have grown. They've gone from a boy to a man or a girl to a woman, whatever. And you can't move on. But, but also, just because the person has changed and matured, it still doesn't mean that they're your person. That's that's the other part of this of the journey. People think, like I said, oh, well, I've grown. I've ascended. Let me go back and get my person because since I've been growing, that means that they've been growing. Yeah, but you and this person were always meant to grow ap like apart separately. You can, when you get done doing all of your growing and all of your manifesting and you go back, yeah, they've been growing, they've been manifesting too. God didn't tell you that you and this person were supposed to manifest anything together necessarily. That's not every person's situation. A lot of people are, are forcing this narrative that because they're growing and ascending that the other person is going to do the same thing and that means that they're coming back together. No. It doesn't. You can still end up being single, self-sufficient, and abundant. Some of you, you're meant to be single, honestly. <laughs> 
or you're just meant to discover how strong and powerful and abundant you can be while being single. That was the whole point of this journey because I feel like a lot of people are constantly telling themselves that they just cannot truly have wish fulfillment or they're not, they can't see themselves being strong and victorious unless this other person is with them. This is causing conflict and chaos. Three of Pentacles, two partnerships where people could have equal give and take and be working together. Instead, they're out in the cold. <laughs> Ten of Swords. Queen of Wands, the High Priestess, and the Ten of Pentacles. And the Fool card. It's, it's the same situation. The masculine, the feminine, and the karmic. It's a trap. It's and I I can't remember, but I know it's probably been in the last month where I said this whole karmic situation that we talk about all the time, it's the biggest illusion. And I feel like this reading is confirmation because I've been I've been dealing with this even on my own now for several months. I'm like, this has to be the biggest like situation. It's here to just control you. This idea, it's like, it's a, it's a false reality. Everybody is, is, is telling themselves, me and my person are not together because of this other person. That's, that, that's, that's everybody's story. Me and the person that I'm supposed to be with, we're not together. We're left out in the cold and, and I'm dealing with all of this backstabbing and betrayal. And it's all because of this other person. And I'm the divine feminine. I'm the high priestess. I'm the one who should have it all. No. If if somebody is with a, a situ in a situation with another person, even if it doesn't seem like it's a good situation, if they're choosing to be there, you have to leave them there. It's like a reading I did yesterday. You're the Ace of Pentacles. The anointing, the prosperity, the abundance, it goes where you go. And that is where most people are falling short. You're not recognizing your own power. Your power, you associate your power to create and manifest with the power of somebody else instead of realizing that the, everything is actually within you. Everything. Everybody feels like, well, you have to have this other person in order to manifest all of the, you know, the abundance and... The anointing is within you. You should be prosperous and, and have the favor of God upon you in your life, whether you're with that other person or not. So what are you waiting on? Everybody is waiting to reunite with a person or to go in union with somebody to be great. You don't have to do that. And then when it doesn't happen, everybody's throwing this hissy fit. Well, it's because of the karmic. No, it's because... The karmic energy and, and me, the way I see stuff <laughs> in a more spiritual sense, the karmic energy always is really your shadow. Just like you feel like that person is your counterpart. You feel like that person is your counterpart and they're mirroring you. What if I told you that the karmic, the third party is your shadow self? It's also a reflection of you. Everything in your life is somehow reflecting back either a part of your, your light self or your shadow self. That karmic person that's willing to, to be there and go through whatever, there's a sense of, of, of yourself that, that is so desperate to have this other person. That person, that shadow aspect of you, the karmic, they're just to show you if you chose to operate out of your shadow self, what it would look like. So why are you so angry at that person? Because what you're really saying when you, well, I, I'm supposed to be, what you're really saying is that you're willing to deal with whatever comes along with that feminine or that masculine as long as you can be with them. And isn't that really how things are with the karmic or you think it is? Everybody feels like with a, a masculine is with their other person or feminine, whoever, however it resonates. Oh, well, they just must just be putting up with all this crap and they're so toxic and unhappy together. Some cases that's true, but sometimes the people, they're actually happy. 
They're supposed to be together. You just haven't gotten the memo that they're supposed to be together or you got it and you won't accept it. Accept it for what it is. Whether you agree with it or not, just accept it for what it is. They are with that other person because they want to be. They're with that other person because of spell work. Regardless, they're with that other person. They're not with you. That's, 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 that's real simple. Keep it at the, They're with them because they're not with you. <laughs> Whether they want to be with you or they don't, they're not with you. So now what? Do you wait another seven, eight years of, of, of another karmic cycle trying to figure out what's going on in somebody else's household? Because you keep telling yourself that they're, they have to be in an unhappy home if he's or she is not with you. No. Don't be the person that's holding on to the stress, fear, and the anxiety. Because it's going to lead to you not working hard on yourself, page of wands in the reverse, and taking risk in your own life to actually have wish fulfillment. And I think that this, this is, again, it's the collective illusion. It's the energy of confusion and chaos and conflict that is being sent out. And then even in your current situations, for some of you, because of the illusion, the chaos, the conflict and the confusion and the competition, the jealousy and the envy, you could be in situations and it seems like you know that this is good. But why exactly is there all of this tension where this chaos is being sent out? And if you're not strong enough to recognize it, you will fall victim to it. You and your person will be separating because of a bunch of stuff that's happening outside of you and i feel like truly it's a big test it's like god is truly testing are you really ready for a marriage are you truly ready to you know go on the journey of entrepreneurship are you ready for certain things like are you ready to be a leader because if for those things you cannot be easily like <laughs> deterred you you can't fall victim to the chaos and the conflict and the drama of the world. People who don't have a, a strong sense of self, who can't take accountability and, and lack awareness, they're going to always fall victim to this. Some people have very happy homes. And when you get done watching TV and listening to the stuff that they're saying in these songs and everything else, what, what I just, before you know it, your marriage is over. How many times have I done reading saying, y'all better be careful listening to your friends and your family? And I see it coming out in the news now. I think it was the, uh, the R&B singer Tyrese, his wife. Tyrese, I've seen him in so many interviews where he's like, I never cheated on, his, on, on my wife. The woman divorced him and now she's making public statements saying, you know, it was my friends and family. I wish I wouldn't have ever listened to them because I regret divorcing. I, I regret divorcing him now. That's happening a lot. People, their traditions and their friends and their family, you listen to all these outside forces and voices. And before you know it, the things in your life, they're coming to an end. And those same people that help walk you off the cliff, I promise you, they're not going to jump off the cliff to come down there and save you. Know yourself, know your situation, even when it comes to readers. Me or anybody else, stop letting readers tell you who you should and should not be with. For a lot of people, they'll tell you anything to get you to book a reading. <laughs> Queen of Cups, Scorpio, Taurus, Cancer. Oh, look at this. Queen and King of Cups just came out together with the Hierophant and the Death card. There could be something here that's going through a transformation or rebirth. Something that ended could be coming back together. Or somebody has been trying to make something end. That's actually destined for long-term commitment. Or this also could, these four cards are saying so much. Or this could be a queen and a king of cups. Two people both who are going through a very serious spiritual transformation right now. You just have to know your situation 
everything is being balanced out. Wow. Temperance. Scorpio season is now. We just had a full moon in Taurus. Saturn is directing Pisces, Queen and King of Cups. There has been an illusion here that has been shattered. Somebody here now is getting the truth. There's an epiphany. Somebody is getting the truth. The Wheel of Fortune. You know that something is destined. It's time now for you to move into your Ten of Cups. So going back to the very first row of cards here. Somebody here has been so caught up on the situation that you're either into something with somebody right now and you know you need to walk away from it because you're meant to be with somebody from your past or you need to manifest your true person or some of you are still very much hung up on a situation from your past and you are not seeing that your person is right in front of your face. The person that can actually give you the life that, that, that you know that you really, really want. Take it however it resonates, but there is a, a major spiritual transformation here that's taking place between two people who have been in some kind of illusion. The illusion is over. Two people are supposed to be together. But it's going to take both people to realize, listen, and I feel like this is two people who perhaps are around each other. Now, I'm going to speak for that. It's like two people. Well, it doesn't matter if it's the current situation or two people who were together in the past. Two people are going through a spiritual awakening where they're realizing that a lot of different situations and factors is the reason why they're not together, but they're not together because of any problem that they have with one another. Somebody is coming to, okay, the reason why we're not together is because of a bunch of illusions and confusion. Then you have some people who are realizing the reason why I still think I'm supposed to be with that person is because of an illusion and a bunch of confusion. It's different groups here, but the center of it is just illusions and confusion. And you needed to see that something here is really for you. And something here is clearly not. Nothing here should be forced. Nothing. You shouldn't be forcing yourself to be with somebody that you're unhappy with. And you shouldn't be forcing yourself to go and try to get somebody back. They may already be happy elsewhere or even if they're unhappy somewhere else. Nothing here is to be forced. Nothing. Somebody needs to accept you need to take a leap of faith and try something new. Somebody is in your life or they were in your life to teach you a spiritual lesson. That's it. It's a lot of illusions got people thinking, like I said, that your, your biggest life lesson was meant to be your lifetime partner. No, it wasn't. Accept it. Look, your, if that's not confirmation, I don't know what else to tell you. Your true love is already part of your life. Boundaries. Firm boundaries are needed now. Either somebody being in your life here they're here and now this says here and now some of you you have a person in your life right now that's your person but you keep looking back to say but no it's the person from the past who i met at the beginning of my journey we're supposed to be coming back together you're missing out on your blessing that is being presented to you now because you keep trying to force something from the past stop trying to force a reunion and then for some of you your person is in the past. They're, they're already a part of your life. And if you were to create boundaries with a person that's in your life wasting your time now, you could re reunite with that person. Again, it's two separate groups here. And I can't tell you which group you're in. Chemistry. The attraction you feel is mutual. You and this person both. You're going through a transfer. You can feel one another. And this relationship is absolutely leading towards marriage. Somebody could be dealing with financial challenges right now. Yeah, somebody could be obsessing over their finances. This could be um, a situation with a friend. Maybe it's meant to become more. Those financial challenges could be part of this person going through a, a serious spiritual transformation. 
whatever the case may be. That's not everyone's story, but for some of you, that's the case. Children, children are important. So yeah, somebody here, you're supposed to be married and having kids or businesses or whatever with this person. They're in your life to teach you a, a lesson because they're your twin flame. And then for some of you, your twin flame is already married with children. They were only in your life to teach you a spiritual lesson and you need to set up boundaries with that situation and allow yourself to experience new love. Yeah, you need to release something. For a lot of you, you have a person and you consider them your twin flame. This person is married and has children. You need to release this person. Or if you want to recommit to that person, release what they did to you in the past that hurt you so bad. It's, it's all about releasing. If you release this fear and this anxiety and all these illusions and the confusion whatever it's meant to be it'll just fall in place like i say I'm, I'm talking to several different groups of people all these different situations somebody wants to apologize somebody who you can be completely um vulnerable with maybe you're in denial so i felt like this is the group of you where you know you know you want to go to a person from the past. This is somebody you can be completely vulnerable with. They want to apologize. They want to tell you that, you know, they've truly changed. Maybe something was affecting this relationship and addiction. Something, but it's time for you to make a decision. Who's it going to be? What's it going to be? And like I said, there's more, there's, this is a collective reading. Some of you, it's a person from the, look at that, union, coming together, mirroring. I cannot make this up. Look at this person as if they are you. That will help you to forgive people. Whether it's you looking at the past person like they're you, or you looking at a person in your life now and realize, hmm, I've been just like that before. I've learned that lesson before. Some of you are meeting a person and they're learning lessons now that you learned previously, but they just like they have something to learn from you, they have something to teach you as well. Some of you, the person that you dealt with in the past, they taught you a harsh lesson in the past and now you living your life is teaching them a lesson. You know, everybody is, kar everybody is karmic. Everybody. Some experiences are good. Some of them are not. It's a past life connection here. There's a lot of love coming in, though. You know, you should just open yourself up to receive the love that God, you know, has for you. This align. There are signs here. Very soon. You have unconditional love. Very soon you're going to be receiving unconditional love. Either from a past person or a new person. That's a, a past life connection. Ooh, fertility, blessings. Somebody is making, ooh, look. Somebody is making plans. They're doing shadow work. Somebody is preparing for marriage. They see you as their life partner. You need to go within now to prepare yourself. There may be distance between you and this person. It could be physical or emotional. It's a separation, but there's a good change coming that's leading to a lot of celebrations and good karma. Yeah, because somebody wants to make you an offer of commitment after going through an awakening. Somebody here has to go through a dark night of the soul. And that's what I'm saying before. Somebody could be having financial challenges. They could be in an unhappy marriage or whatever the case may be, whether it's someone from your past or somebody that you're dealing with now. The, the reason why there is so much confusion is because everybody is awakening. So the people from your past, the people that are in your life now, as well as yourself, are all going through an awakening. And everybody is being stripped of all of the illusions so you have people from the past who are coming in new energy you have people that are around you now they're shifting and changing and you are shifting and changing you are going to have to figure out who and what you are a vibrational match for and it doesn't matter how long you've known a person time is fluid energy is fluid time is an illusion it doesn't matter the history doesn't matter it's the energy 
it's time for something to change. If there's been some kind of separation or just this emotional distance, it's time for that to change. It's time for somebody to go ahead and make an offer of commitment. And I feel that somebody knows that. And that's the reason why they're in this dark night of the soul. Somebody has to see the truth about their connections, their family, their friends, their finances. They have to see the truth about this. Or else you can't go towards somebody or they can't come towards you until they learn a lesson. Because somebody's going to have to learn a new perspective, a new way of looking at things because they're easily triggered. Somebody here could have a lot of air in their chart. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, they're overthinking. They're overthinking everything and the, the signs and the synchronicities are right there in their face. Just stop overthinking within a few weeks, within a few months. So for some of you, something is happening soon. Within a few weeks, somebody's going to have a very powerful revelation, a huge spiritual awakening, and it's going to lead to them moving differently towards you within a, the next few months. And then the, within the next few months, they're going to be really making some serious plans to commit to you. Look, leaving. Somebody is leaving behind everything that doesn't serve them, or this is you. And it's saying here to wait, trust in divine timing. Somebody is holding back the fact that they want to propose to you. But right now, there's a need for there to be a time apart distance because somebody needs to figure out their soul purpose. Somebody is stuck right now self-sabotaging. Somebody is self-sabotaging their own dreams, perhaps of being with you. Some of you, you have a person that really regrets being with you or leaving you. They could be an earth sign. They're sending you telepathic communication because they see you clearly. This could be someone from your past, but they were karmic. Like I said, everybody really is karmic, but somebody, like, again, people from your past, they're regretful because they're waking up and they're seeing the truth of who you are. Just because they're awakening now does not mean that they're supposed to be with you. They still may be left out in the cold. It's like, well, great. You woke up. Okay, fine. But some of you now, you have a new person in your life. They want a commitment. Somebody, it's like now you need to choose. Do you want the person that just wants to come and apologize to you or the person that wants to come and offer you a commitment? Because that's exactly how I'm seeing it. You have a group of masculines who are regretful, who want to apologize or feminines. And then you have a group who are saying they want to commit. But the reason why they they need to they need time is because they're spiritually awakening and get in preparing themselves for marriage where somebody else is regretful because they probably married somebody else. It's a big difference. And then it, it go it boils down to what kind of compromises are you willing to make? If you want to deal with somebody who was married and has kids and they're going through divorces and financial troubles and everything else because you just feel like you are supposed to be with that person. Go for it. That's your business. But for some of you, if you're ready to take a leap of faith, you have a person that may be coming in and they don't have any baggage. Their only problem, though, is that maybe they are going through, like I said, a dark night of the soul. And if they do have baggage, they're actually getting rid of it. But somebody is coming in with a fairly clean slate. Yeah. And you will have to compromise in any situation, whether you're dealing with somebody new or someone from the past, you're going to have to learn how to compromise because the situation here is about to move very fast. For some of you, you and a person could be choosing to travel together, relocate. It's just a lot of fast moving energy here. There is no space or place for there to be pain and conflict here, not in this twin flame connection. You're going to have to forgive yourself. Some of you, there's a fire sign right here. King of Wands. This person is introverted. They don't tell you everything, but you should look at them as if they are you. They want, they're mirroring you. This is somebody who loves you, but they're holding back. Maybe they're going through a dark night of the soul right now. They don't feel like it's truly safe for them to tell you every, all of the plans that they have for you. But they want to spend quality time with you. They're just holding back because, honestly, they're afraid of rejection. And a lot of you don't realize it, but these different energies who are trying to connect with you, they know that you have more than one option. They know that it's a choice between 
them and someone else. Some of you have a person that really, really has good intentions for you, but they already know you have somebody else in your energy. So they're holding back. That could be a past person or a new person. Somebody out here also knows that right now they're going through their own set of challenges and they don't want to put more on you. But it's it's frightening to them because they're like, well, if they don't hurry up and say something for a lot of you there, this could be a new person. They're like, you're going to end up going back to somebody from the past. It's still a lot of confusion here that you have to work through. But you know what you want and what you don't want. And again, whether it's somebody old or it's somebody new, you're going to have to fight through it and you're going to have to compromise. What many of you need to realize is neither one of these situations are perfect. It's really like at this point, you're going to have to pick your poison. And it's not, I'm not saying like, oh, it's a bad thing, but I'm saying neither one of these situations are going to come to you perfect. Which, which one are you willing to deal with? With which person are you willing to compromise with? Some people are willing to deal with a person who's married and has kids and, you know, other situations. Some people are willing to deal with a person who may have some financial challenges. What can you deal with long term? Because, again, circumstances and conditions are going to change. But always look at the person's character. 